Hello and welcome to another Django tutorial. My name is Tom with LearnPythonTutorial.com and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about the settings.py file. Now this is going to be a rather long tutorial and I highly suggest that you uh, follow the whole tutorial because we will make changes to our uh, project here in this file and also everything in the settings file is extremely important so make sure you follow along and uh, if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing we see is a comment at the top of the settings file and this is just a standard comment telling us hey you can find your your uh, documentation at these two URLs and this was uh, generated when we ran the Django admin start project all right so that's you know just a little information nothing too important minus the documentation here uh, next thing we see is import OS OS is a Python module that allows us to uh, use cross platform uh, functionality for finding paths to directories and files. Um, if you look down on the next line you see os.path.thirname os.path.thirname um, what it's doing is getting the path to our in this case base directory but import OS allows us to do that on a Mac, on a Windows, on Linux, on servers so the great part about that is there's really no um, having to type in the our hard coding each path in so it saves us time and then in this case in the base star we're actually saving it as a variable so we can use it later in the settings file now you may be wondering what is my base star where is my base star well one little cool thing we could do is just print it out so we do print base star alright and then go into your terminal and go ahead and run your server. So Python manage.py run server. And it's going to print to us the path. And you see users, Tom, desktop, Django, LPT, LPT. All right, so we have two LPT folders. And this can get confusing because in theory, we actually have three LPT folders. So let's look at this. All right, so I'm in my desktop right now. Then it says Django. All right, Django. And then I go to LPT, LPT, cool, and then LPT. So this is our base folder. But if you look, if I click on that, there's another LPT folder. So this can be quite confusing to you or to anyone using this. So let's go ahead and change our base, which this is, to base, our base directory to base. So let's go ahead and rename it and call it base. All right. Now that we change that, we can go back to our... Um, text editor. I'm actually going to close out my text editor. Don't save. And reopen it because now I changed a folder. It may not recognize it when I go to save it. So I'm going to reopen my folder and I'm going to go to base and open it there. And you can see I got base and I got my lessons and my LPT. Alright, sweet. So there's my base. Now we need to open up settings.py to finish going over what we're going over. Again, come out comment out uh, print base to, uh, there because that would print every time we run our server and we don't need that <clears throat> so I'll just comment out comment it out so you guys know how to find the base there uh, the next thing we see is our security warning um, and this is our secret key and our secret key what it does is it protects when we're running like sessions messages uh, password resets and, and stuff like that um, the secret key should never be shared with anybody, but here's my secret key if you want to look at it. Because <laughs> I'm going to change it before we deploy our website. But do not share this with anybody, because if you uh, do share this and someone gets a hold of it, they can access your website. So you don't want to share it. So just remember that, don't share it. All right. Uh, the secret key is also created when we run the Django uh, admin start app uh, command. And that's when the secret key is generated. Next thing you see is uh, debug true. Now, uh, it's very important you don't run debug true when you're in uh, production or when your your website's deployed, because the debug um, feature in the Django is uh, very informative. It's so informative that if someone came to your website and debug was on, they could find a way into your site and basically pirate it or hack it or whatever you want to call it and take over your site so debug should never be on when you're in production only in development and as I said the cool part about 
debug is is so informative so when we're building our web app here we'll get a very um, informative information of what's wrong with our website and that is awesome uh, next we see is allowed host and allowed host is um, when the debug is set to false we have to set allowed host and this is to protect protect against uh, HTTP host uh, header attacks and <clears throat> what that is is um, basically someone coming in and taking your website and changing it over to a different domain name uh, so what we can do what we sh have to do here is when this is set to false we have to go in and put in our domain name so for in this case if you learn python tutorial .com, all right um, now you would only be able to access a website through learn python tutorial .com. Uh, www dot would not work so we could either put a another one another string in here whoops fat fingers and put www learn python tutorial dot com all right or we could just simply take this one out so we don't have to do all that typing and put a dot right here and this would cover learn python tutorial dot com and www dot uh, LearnPythonTutorial.com. So <clears throat> this is not required during development, so we'll go ahead and remove that. But just know when we have to deploy, there's just a couple security features that we have to visit before we uh, deploy our site on a server so it's live. Next thing we see is something called installed apps, and installed apps <clears throat> basically tells the Django project what apps are installed on the, on on the project. All right. If the app's not here, the project has no idea it exists, so it won't work, and it won't have the Django commands wouldn't function on it. So the cool part about um, the Django also it comes with several apps already installed. You got the admin feature, authenticate, content types, sessions, messages, and static files. <coughs> All these apps are very useful, so we're going to keep those apps. They're not required, but we're going to keep them for our project here. Now, since we created an app in the previous tutorial, but we didn't add it to install the apps, Django has no idea it exists. So let's go ahead and tell Django that, hey, we created an app called Lessons. So again, uh, create a string called Lessons. All right, and put a comma behind it because when we add future. Uh, apps to our project we want to make sure they're comma separate otherwise we'll run into issues all right so now the Django will recognize lessons as an app in its project and it will treat it as an app uh, next thing is middleware classes and middleware classes are like uh, just lightweight software that uh, handles request and response to uh, from the client who is the user using the computer to the server so it handles the request and response so when the client goes to a website they're requesting something and when the server sends back the website there that's the response so <clears throat> these classes here handle how that's treated and modify it or what are make changes as needed um, we won't be using too much of this I don't think unless we come up with a feature where we need to modify the request and response but if you want to read more about this, there's uh, tons of documentation on the Django project uh, website. All right. Um, next thing we see is a root URL conf, and this is our uh, request, how we handle a request, how we grab the request from the user. And if you look, it's actually a path to our um, main URLs file here. So we click on it, and here's our URLs file. All right, and this is how we handle uh, the request more on this in a couple tutorials so we'll just leave it as is uh, next thing is templates and templates are um, how the template engine handles uh, our templates that we create for our website now um, the templates engine for Django is very advanced and it's really cool it makes our life so much easier in building websites so we can make changes in here <clears throat> we will discuss this as we start making templates and how to set it up but for now just know that Django has a uh, 
pretty sophisticated template engine and it gives us the ability to do a lot of things with it so we make our changes here all right to handle uh, our templates the next thing we see is the uh, WSGI application this is um, the path to our uh, development server the one that we ran when we run python manage.py run server uh, this is the path to that server now if you want to use a different server you would change it here that's completely up to you but the development server is great for me so I'm just gonna leave it there um, next thing you'll see is our databases and this is where we tell the Django what database we want to use we put in our password we put in the path to the um, database we're going to use um, and all that fun stuff for now we're going to leave this as is until we go to uh, deploy the web, uh, deploy our project then we'll make changes to the database but right now we're just going to stick with SQLite 3 and um, we'll leave this along until we get there uh, the next one we come across is auth, auth password validators and this is another cool feature included in the Django uh, project and what it does when it's set up properly it um, authenticates users passwords and if you ever ran a website before you know some people are not very good at creating passwords so we can put some rules and guidelines in here I, I would say more rules um, in how the the password should be created like if it needs to have a special character if it needs to start with a capital uh, does it need to include numbers and letters stuff like that then we put that in here as it is set up right now even though it says auth password validators there is actually no validator so it would accept any password entered by a user so <clears throat> before we deploy we'll go ahead and take a look at this and create some uh, validations for the users to make sure that passwords are secure and uh, keep out the riffraff. Um, internationalization, our next one. This is where we set up our language code, our time zone, and all that stuff. If you want to read more about this, I'm just going to leave this as is. But if you want to read more, you can always go to the docs at the Django project.com. And finally, our static files. <clears throat> now we create a path using this. Um, to our static files where they're going to be located and how we're going to handle them and this static URL and there's a couple more that we're going to add in when we go um, and create our static files um, this is how we handle the path so uh, we'll talk about that more in a couple of tutorials as well when we create our static files uh, if you guys have any questions about the settings.py file, please leave a comment on YouTube or on our website, learnpythontutorial.com. I'm here to help you out and help help you understand. I kind of, you know, whizzed through this, but I was trying to keep the tutorial as short as possible. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video, and I will see you in the next tutorial where we take a tour of the admin um, panel. So I'll see you then.